online is probably the most commonly collected piece of demographic data. If your job requires you to work with any information about customers, users, or people, chances are it's unavoidable. But a lot of how we collect and use gender is based on certain assumptions that don't always hold true. And when those assumptions are actually proven false, it can have some pretty interesting results and pretty hilarious ones. That's, that's where this talk comes in. But before we dive straight into the assumption busting, let's establish a few simple facts. There are only two genders, right? Obvious, straightforward, and as we all know, those two genders are pink with triangular torso <laughs> and blue with square torso, better known as female and male. Oh wait, slightly little update. Actually, we have green with upright triangle and blue with upside down triangle. But in fact, this isn't quite the case, is it? It's actually a false assumption that there are only two genders. Science and society has moved, moved beyond that. We've, we've busted that assumption. As everyone actually knows, there are actually three genders. <laughs> and those three genders, as of course everyone knows, are male, female, and Canadian African. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that's not right either, is it? That's, that's, there's definitely something off there. So that, that's also a false assumption. There are not only three genders. Canadian applicant is not, in fact, a gender at all, as far as I'm aware. So, if there's not two, and there's not three, how many are there? Well, genderologists at leading dating app Tinder have discovered as many as 37 whole genders. <laughs> Amazing, right? I mean, it's still wrong, but it's good. What Tinder has done is going to allow a lot more people to express their identity and who they are in meaningful ways. And it's a step in the right direction. But it's still based on an underlying false assumption. The false assumption that there are a finite number of genders or that you can enumerate them. You'll never be able to list all them out. It's, that's just impossible. So if you're collecting gender data, then you really need to ask yourself, what for? Because with, like with most types of data, the use case and how you're going to be using the data is going to affect how you collect it, what options you give. But actually, if you start to ask yourself, what am I collecting gender for? You'll probably run into the false assumption that you need to collect data and no use of gender at all. It's become a bit of a default, but it's in many cases it's completely unnecessary. And in many cases, you won't be using that data, or worse, you won't be using it effectively. Now, now we've got on with those basic facts. I'm going to tell you a bit of a story, and that's, it's my story, to be precise. I grew up in Perth. I had a pretty regular childhood. I was a pretty ordinary teen. I played a lot of video games. I had no personality to speak of. Um, and in 2014, I moved to Melbourne for a job. Back then, I looked like this. A little bit different, right? You see, when I moved to Melbourne, I started finding things. I found interesting people, I found friends, and a community, and I started to find that some assumptions I'd made about my own gender were wrong. Some assumptions that myself and my friends and my family and everyone around me for 20 years had made were wrong. In short, I found myself, and I came out as a transgender woman. Okay. That's a false assumption right there. The false assumption that someone's gender will never change. As someone whose gender, or at least perceived gender, did change, it was actually pretty frustrating to run into all the systems where this assumption was built in. Luckily, this didn't include Facebook. I used Facebook a fair bit, and I still do. And so, when I came out, I made a post on Facebook to let everyone know, and I updated my gender on Facebook. Now, when I talk about Facebook, especially if I'm talking about data, what comes to everyone's minds? <laughs> this big, scary corporation collecting massive amounts of data, completely violating your privacy, probably knows more about you and what you're going to do than you know yourself. Which is why I was pretty surprised when the literal day I changed my gender on Facebook, 
I was scrolling through my feed and disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, well done, Facebook. On one hand, Facebook seemingly didn't track the last transgender, and I guess that's good. But on the other hand, there's a false assumption here, and that false assumption is that a person's gender tells you if they can get pregnant. Because, of course, not every woman, trans or otherwise, can get pregnant. And Facebook aren't the only social media company who made interesting assumptions about gender in the past. A few years back, there was this headline. You see, it came out that Twitter hadn't been asking for anyone's gender. There was no gender option when you signed up for Twitter. But they still wanted to have information on people's gender so that they could sell better ads. And so what did they do? They built an algorithm. They decided that they could tell someone's gender from what they tweet. And needless to say, it was not accurate. When this article came out, it was because Twitter had let you see more information that they've been collecting about you. And so a lot of people were able to go and check and see what gender Twitter thought they were. And in a lot of cases, it was wrong. And this was, it was not great. Because aside from being incredibly inaccurate, it was actually harmful. Remember how I said that these false assumptions can have sometimes hilarious results? Well, often they can have pretty harmful ones too. You see, if you are trans, you spend a lot of time and effort just trying to convince the people around you in the world of who you are. And you have a lot of pushback. There is a lot of things telling you that actually you're not a woman, you are a man. You were born a man, you're still a man. And so being told you're still a man hurts, it's harmful. And having a supposedly neutral algorithm tell you that you are a man, that you are acting like a man, well, that, that really sucked. And it's not just trans people who can suffer from these false assumptions made about gender. Think about how it would feel if you were a woman who really wanted a baby but was unable to get pregnant, seeing tests like that come up, sorry, ads like that come up in your feed. That, that assumption was harmful and it, and it harms people actively. Sorry, I got a little bit serious there. Let's, let's get back to my story. So I came out and I told everyone on Facebook and I updated my journal on Facebook because there was a lot more to go. And unlike Facebook, in a lot of cases, changing my gender was a bit more difficult, especially when I was talking companies that had to hold some kind of legal or financial information about me. And so in the case of my bank, I had to actually print out forms and mail them in. And so I, I waited, and I waited until I changed my name officially and became an FBL. And then I printed out a form to send into my bank just to change my name at this point. I wasn't worried about gender. And I thought, yep, that's fine. And then I got a call. I got a really interesting call from someone. It was quite polite from my bank. And he told me he changed my name in the system, but that he couldn't change my title, my prefix, from Mr. to Miss without a letter from my doctor. And I was a bit confused. You see, in some cases, to change my gender marker, I needed a letter from my doctor to say I was transitioning. But this wasn't about that. This was about titles. And initially, I thought that they made the false assumption that title equals gender, that you can tell someone's gender from their title. But then he went on to tell me that although he couldn't change my title to Miss, he could change it to the gender neutral MX. And I realized actually the false assumption being made was that you have to have a certain gender to use certain titles. And that was pretty inconvenient, but I wasn't too worried. I was like, sure, yeah, make me mix. And I thought nothing of it. And then things got weird. You see, like many Australians, I use BPAY, Australia's preferred way to pay bills. <laughs> <laughs> and so a couple of weeks after that phone call, I got, I got my regular paycheck, and I went to pay some bills. And I processed the BPAY payments as normal, and it was all fine. And then a few days later, they bounced with no reason. And I called up the bank, and they looked into it. And I said, oh yeah, there's, there was some glitch in the system. That's sorted out now, sorry about that. And I was like, okay, cool, and they sent the payments again. And then a few years later, they bounced again. And this time when I caught up, they took it more seriously. I was a bit frustrated, and they put me onto a senior person at their support team who assured me they were looking into it. They didn't know what was wrong, but they were trying to fix it. And after that phone call, I was thinking, I was like, well, didn't this all happen around the time I changed my name? But, but surely that wouldn't do anything. Like Thousands of Australians are changing their name every day. People get married. People change their names all the time. And then it struck me, it was the MX. 
because MX is a gender neutral title, it's quite new, it's quite new in the bank system. And so I, when I spoke to the support person of my bank again, I told them, hey, I think this gender neutral title you've given me is somehow screwing up my BPAC. And they looked into it. And I was right. So the false assumption there was that the systems you integrate with will have the same understanding of gender, in this case, the same understanding of, of titles. And I think this shows that this assumption really isn't good enough. With, with any integration you make between systems, you need to be prepared for the edge cases. You need to be prepared for, for different sources of truth, especially around any topic as complicated and fluctuating as identity. And so they fixed my BPA and everything worked, everything was fine. But something's been a bit off ever since then. So a few weeks ago, this is the last letter I received from my bank a few weeks ago. Wait, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> they, they gave me a knighthood. I'm, I'm so recognized. <laughs> Every single printed letter from my bank now shows me as Sir Ethiel. I'm, 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 I'm MX online, but I'm Sir in real life. I'm, I'm just really disappointed that they don't put titles on bank cards at my bank, because I would, I would love to be flashing that around. <laughs> but, but yeah, I don't, I don't really know what the assumption is here. I don't really know what's gone wrong here. It's just... <laughs> And it turned out my bank were actually kind of prophetic. Not about the night thing, at least not yet, <laughs> but about the MX. Because you see, a couple of years after I came out as a trans woman, I came out as non-binary. And I ran real hard into this false assumption that someone's gender will never change multiple times. This caused even more problems, especially when half the systems I was updating my gender in didn't even let me select an option other than male or female. And, yeah, again, it, it sucks, it hurts when you are forced to put yourself into a box where you don't belong in order to be able to use an app or a service. It's, it's quite common. And we need to do better, but we also need to be a bit smart about how we do better, because sometimes companies and apps try to do better, and you end up with forms like this. It's, that's, that's a really terrible UI. So, for starters, transgender is not a gender, it's a gender status. It, it says that your gender is different from the one you were assigned at birth. It's not actually a gender itself. And then MX, as we've just discussed, is a title. So this, this form is just all over the place. So, yeah, that's another thing. False assumption that transgender is a gender. Ne never ever put a collection form that has male, female, transgender. Because if nothing else, a lot of people are going to be wanting to take both male or female and transgender, because it's a status, it's not gender. And also, that UI made the assumption that transgender is the same as non-binary, and that's blatantly false. Most people who are transgender still identify as a man or a woman, they still identify within the gender binary. Being non-binary is a separate concept, it means you, you're not a man or a woman. And, it's, and that kind of conflation of being transgender with having a non-binary gender it's all over the place. For example, this great quote from Bill Shorten, former opposition leader. If there's only 1,200 trans people in Australia, I've met most of them. <laughs> <laughs> but I know exactly how he got this number. He got this number from the last census. This number is actually the number of people who reported a non-binary gender identity on the census. And that number's still way too low, by the way. The ABS themselves say, this number is inaccurate, it should not be used for anything. Why is it low? Because the ABS made it so that if you wanted to report a gender other than male or female on the census, you had to go through a whole process where you called up a hotline, spoke to someone, and got a special code to enter to let you enter that. And so naturally you got drastic under-reporting, and that has real-world consequences. But the ABS, they have got some things right, and one of those things is this. The standard for sex and gender variable 2016. This is a really, really great job. If you do genuinely need to collect gender data or sex data, I suggest you refer to this document because it does bust a lot of the assumptions we've been through and does give you some really good options on how you can collect this stuff in a useful way. And it busts a bunch of other assumptions too, like the very common one that gender and sex are the same thing. They're not. They're not entirely separate. It's a very complicated subject, but, but they do differ. And it's very important to know which one of those two you're actually collecting. Hint. In most cases, it's gender. It's very rare that your app needs to know the physical anatomy of someone. 
But I'm now only showing you how titles and genders can be mishmashed and inappropriately construed and used. But if you want to take it to a whole new level, let's let's take a flight. Specifically, let's take a flight with Tiger Air. Why? Because if you go to book a ticket with Tiger Air, you'll be presented with this. The five titles, <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mrs. Miss, Dr. Male, and Dr. Female. Why? I don't know. I have to assume that they initially, when they were building this form, they made the assumption that you can tell someone's gender from their title. They thought, yes, we can just say your entire form field and just predict this. And then they discovered that actually some titles are gender neutral, like doctor. And rather than go back on that decision, they decided to plow ahead. So yeah, tiger out, go for it. <laughs> you know who else went for it? Went for it? <coughs> Whoever decided that this made sense. The four genders, ladies and gentlemen. Female, male with kids, male, and male with kids. A gender field cannot just collect any random info you care about. This is not even specific to gender. This is basic data collection principles, people. You, you can't collect two different things with a single field. You end up with completely skewed results and no way to actually use that data. And we want quality data, or, or it's useless. But also you have to be careful when taking things to the other extremes. Because the, the bold assumption that's the opposite of this is that someone has the same gender in every system. And if someone's gender and gender identity and related details don't fully match between two systems, it's clearly fraud. Now I've told you some of my anecdotes and stories about my interesting encounters with systems and gender, but I'm going to tell you one of my friends. So a couple of years ago, my friend graduated high school and they went to apply for university and they decided to apply for a screenwriting degree. And they applied for a tech debt alone in order to be able to pay for that. And when they got the results back, it looked like this. So that was not invalid and rejected because gender did not match, because the gender in their university system didn't match the one in the government system. Now, in this case, they were able to sort it out, it was no big deal. They flipped, flipped some markets around and reapplied. But in other cases involving Centrelink and the government, it's a bit more serious. So this was a couple of years ago. And at that time, Centrelink literally didn't have an option for non-binary and gender diverse people in their system. And at this point, it meant that if someone was non-binary or gender diverse and had that listed in their university system, they could not receive their youth allowance. It was suddenly cut off. It's not like they need that limb or anything, right? <sighs> Sorry, I, I got a bit serious again. How's this for a gender selection screen? <laughs> Ye for <laughs> colloquialisms. <laughs> uh, they're not a great way to collect gender. At best, they're, they're absolutely cheesy, as you just saw. But at worst, they make no sense to someone from a different cultural background. Now, I'm going to finish up today by showing you one example which I think perfectly exemplifies a lot of these bad assumptions rolled into one glorious product. You see, a while ago I was on Facebook, as I mentioned, I use it a fair bit, and scrolling through, and this scrolled into my feed. Gender API. Keep your registration form simple and let us determine the gender of your customers. <laughs> oh, oh boy, this, this can't be good. <laughs> Let, let's have a look. Oh, okay. So you, you give them a name, and you get back a gender. Gee, that's actually an assumption we hadn't covered yet. The, the assumption that you can tell someone's gender from their name. You, you can't. For starters, there are many names out there that are very evenly split, but are very gender neutral. Secondly, there's always people who will defy the trend. There's always names that are predominantly male or female, but, but some people do take them. and So it's never going to be a good way to do this. And but this API is actually a bit smarter than that, at least it likes to think it is. I was going to put together some slides to show you what I mean, but they did it for me. So, <laughs> gender API, keep your form simple. You can optimize your registration forms. Look, Ma, no fields. <laughs> <laughs> they have easy integration with lots of different languages and platforms. Andrea is female in the USA and male in Italy. What a radical gender fluid babe. <laughs> Except that's, that's not what they mean. <laughs> What they mean is, if you give them the location of someone as well as their name, they'll be able to give you a better guess 
as to what gender they have. And then one thing I found on their website broke me, and it was this. We can also determine the gender of an email address. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what? I, I, I don't have any words there for this. Um, yeah, no, email addresses are not gender. And the really awful thing about all this, this website gets over 30 million queries a month. <laughs> and it's just going up. So let's put this thing to the test while we're here. Why not? So let's go to the gender exam website. And scroll down. Wow, two, two million names. All right, so where is where do you do that test? <laughs> that's not a robot. Okay. <coughs> she did is male. Enjoy the rest of your day at this conference knowing that you are in a male conference. <laughs> Thank you. I do actually have one extra slide because for anyone who follows me on Twitter, this is not new news, but um I was booking a flight with Virgin Air this week. <laughs> and Virgin Air, when they changed my name to F.E. Oldham in their system, I had to email them to change it, they left my title with Mr. And so this week I was trying to fix that. And the form was locked down. Like it was a read-only field. But as any good hacker did, I right-clicked, inspect element, and I was able to change the drop-down. And so I figured, well, I may as well add a custom gender as well, a custom title as well. And I changed it to MX, because it wasn't in the list, but I figured, I'm, if I'm going to try and hack this thing, I may as well go all the way. <laughs> and that's how I've ended up as Jala Langstrom <laughs> And I am looking forward to hearing that over the intercom one day at the airport. <laughs> yeah. I, I tried changing it to, to Miss, which wasn't a lockdown, and just changed this part here. So clearly, the problem there is that it's a lockdown field not meant to be changed, but yeah, thanks, thanks Virgin. I, I, I really look forward. I'm told if I ever get to the silver level of Virgin Free Supplier, they're going to print out a lunch tag with this on it. So <laughs> I have a goal there. I'm looking forward to that. Cool. Um, any final questions?